How's it going guys? It's Kai Darts here and I thought I'd make a quick video to show you guys one of the small benefits of implementing Fusion 360 into your pipeline and workflow for video game development. And by no means am I an advocate or spokesperson for Fusion 360. I'm just someone who sees the benefits of uh, using it. So before I get too far ahead, I do want to show you guys the ending result of this project that I started in Fusion 360. Alright guys, so everything you just watched in that video was all created inside of Fusion 360. Now, Fusion 360 has been around for a while now and has definitely been underestimated and overlooked by gaming studios. And the reason for that is because it's a CAD program and a lot of people don't like using CAD programs and mixing it with game art because of the topology. You usually get a bunch of triangulated uh, meshes and it's definitely hard and you have to retopologize it. But retopology is something that you're always going to have to do. There's no escaping it. So why not just do it? If you can model 20 times faster using a CAD program, why not just go ahead and do it? get it out the way and I found a bunch of different ways to go about optimizing the topology to make it easier and a lot quicker and efficient to export the meshes from Fusion to Maya for, for UVs and things like that so what I did in this scene was created about 12 or 13 uh, modular sets so I can create a gaming environment to play on here and, and they're, they're, they're relatively simple um, modular pieces they're all flat and I was able to get that detail that you can't get inside of a uh, regular 3d modeling program such as 3ds max Maya cinema 4d and at least you can't get it in this amount of time this took a total of 30 minutes for all these pieces and that's just something that you just cannot do inside of those other programs now after creating the the modular pieces I had to make sure they made sense so what I did was started to world build the level design started seeing what pieces go with what and how I can manipulate that. And once I'm done inside of Fusion 360, I export out all the models, then re import them inside of Maya for retopology and UVs. And the reason you want to retopologize is you want to have, uh, you want the models to be as less dense as possible and have the least amount of polys so your game engine can handle that without having any loss of frames, less taxing. Uh, you know, it's just better for the engine. Now, you UV everything because you want to apply textures to it, which you can texture inside of Substance Painter or whatever your preference is for texturing. And I also, I will be doing a more in-depth uh, tutorial. If I can get more people interested in the topic, I'll actually show you guys and actually work on something from start to finish if you guys are interested in that. And if you guys are interested, just leave a comment and just say, uh, I'm interested or, you know, give the video a like, subscribe, share the video. Also guys, be aware that I also removed all the pieces that aren't going to be shown. Like all the faces that aren't going to be seen in the scene, they aren't on the model. So once I'm done with the low poly inside of Maya, I import the high poly that I exported from Fusion 360 into ZBrush. Now if I just pull up the wireframe, you'll see that the triangulation is really insane. And this is why people hate working with CAD files. Now there's a way to go about fixing this. And if you dynamesh this, you'll get rid of all the triangulation. So if you try to bake this right now with the low poly we created inside of Maya, you're gonna have those lines going through. But if you just dynamesh it, you're gonna make it more dense. So when you start doing the baking process, it'll pick up that detail from this high poly model. So it looks like nothing's happened right now. But if I turn back on that wireframe, you'll see that it's a lot thicker and a lot denser. And now you can start sculpting some of that high detail or add alphas if need be. And once complete, you can just override this save onto the model you imported from the beginning. Now I open up Substance Painter where I can load in the models that I created inside of Maya, those low poly models. Now you can see this is just one face, just a single rectangle. 
and I'm going to be baking that detail that we created in Fusion 360 and then Dynamesh inside of ZBrush onto this low poly mesh. Now you can definitely see the, the visual power of Fusion 360 uh, within your pipeline because within a couple minutes we had uh, a highly detailed model being reduced to a low poly model with that same amount of detail. And then you can just start texturing and your game model's 100% uh, done right now. Now we just need somewhere to put this. And the place to put these are inside the game engine of your choice. I chose Unreal Engine 4. And as you can tell, everything that's inside this environment was created inside of Fusion 360. These are those 12 uh, modular pieces that I created in the beginning. I just strategically placed them around the environment. Now, if you guys found this video somewhat useful, please consider giving it a like. Uh, leaving a comment and if you haven't already hit that sub button and also guys if you want to see me create a entire environment or corridor from beginning to end starting in Fusion 360 to the game engine leave a comment let me know what you guys think or let me get suggestions on what I should do for the next video and uh, just a little caveat this entire process took a total of uh, a little under three hours to create uh, from sketch to fully realized environment inside the game engine so with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one.